Hi, everybody. Hi. We're so happy that you're here to join us today. Today, we're going to be answering some of your questions. That's right. I'm just going to read the way this person wrote it. I have two teenage girls at home. They often feel isolated. So I say to them, whenever things get tough, you always want to roll over and ask for help. So I tell them they have things pretty good. So just tough it out. How do you think people should address the topic when they're feeling depressed, isolated, or like they don't want to live? I've learned a lot of different ways to look at this. Originally, just as a child, hearing that would would infuriate me certainly from anybody to say tough it out or you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps uh, I don't think anybody wants to hear that but everybody's problems are sort of unique to themselves and so you can't expect another person to give you a good idea of how to deal with yourself you're the only one with the answers so the really communication is the only key tool that we can have is being able to communicate with the people that we rely on honestly and openly without them freaking out or without causing a fight or being offended or, or whatever. It has to be talked about uh, whatever the problem is and why they're having the problem and what, you know, if it's a problem they had in the past, how did they deal with it in the past? If it's a brand new problem, you just let them talk about their, their challenges, just what they're up against. You have to tough it out <laughs> uh, uh, in order to yeah. do it right. You have to be able to listen to honesty and not fly off the handle or really make the situation worse. So some of the best situations that I've learned from were from Logan. They were really, really difficult situations. But because Logan was willing to speak honestly to me, I learned. For example, I always would put on my happy face, my optimistic personality, whenever I was going to be with Logan. And I'd show up, hey, Logan. And I wasn't real sensitive to how he was feeling. I would just kind of pretend he was feeling better than I sensed he felt. And sometimes that led to somewhere along the way we were going to have an argument or simply negative energy towards each other. One day, Logan said, I can't relate to you. You're just always so happy and you overcame your eating disorder and you overcame your divorce and you overcame raising two kids with disabilities and I can't relate to that. It's like you're not a real person. And that was one of the best learning experiences for me because I needed to listen to what he had to say about that. And I learned I am famous for giving advice. So if Logan was communicating to me, I feel really crappy today, or I'm in a lot of pain, or I can't paint, or I can't do this, and I can't find the right chair. Hearing Heather or Logan talk about their unhappiness and how it felt like a dead end. Everywhere they looked, it was a dead end. I hurt for them, but I also hurt inside of me. But I wasn't aware enough to realize I was feeling their pain as if I was them. And what that does is it paralyzes me. I can't be any help to them at all if I am taking on their pain. Rather than just being a really good listener and listening to them, asking them questions, asking them why they feel the way they do, and if they thought about how they can help themselves. So that really helped me because if I was giving advice, I wasn't listening. And the number one important conversation tip is be a good listener. Listen to what they say. Now that means you're going to have to hear some really hard stuff. Like yeah. Logan was saying, sometimes, especially growing up, both Logan and Heather didn't feel like they wanted to be alive. Right. Did it help you being able to talk to me about that? Yes, uh, because I was able to call it out. It sort of lost its power. It lost its secrecy. So I'm not carrying the idea of suicide all by myself, which is ultimately what would kill somebody. Is They can't handle it all of that all by themselves, but to sort of give it give it away a little bit to somebody that is not going to freak out and, and basically push you over the edge. That's not, not everybody has that. Um, and not a lot of people can deal with talking about it and not being like, and really not freaking out because you're talking about wanting to die and it just is such a scary topic and it's terrifying, obviously. It's interesting because just 
talking about it right now brings back some of the emotions that I felt when I was quite terrified that I would find Logan dead one day from his own hands. And that was really hard. So what I did was I listened to a nonfiction book by Danielle Steele, who actually is a fiction novelist. Her son committed suicide. And I, I listened to that book twice when I would go on walks. And what I came to realize was that she had tons of money and she even hired a bodyguard for her, her son. She did not want to leave him alone because she knew he was a danger to himself. He was hospitalized, medicated, looked over, and he still managed to commit suicide. So what I learned from that is if somebody truly wants to commit suicide, there is literally nothing you can do. Literally to change their mind. But what was really important to me is I desperately wanted to know what was on their minds. What were Heather and Logan thinking? So that if it ever did happen, at least I wouldn't be left with, I didn't even know what they were thinking. Right. Maybe I could have helped. So it's just really important to listen. And if, if you're so busy giving advice so that you can feel better yourself because of your desperate need to help them, then you're not listening and I've given so much advice to my disabled kids and how would I know what's good for them? I'm not the one with the disabled body and yet I thought I could give them advice. So another important thing to remember is is that my advice isn't good for everyone and they it's true what they say let someone ask for your advice because sometimes they just simply need to be heard validated and they need to talk it out like Logan said which was great Logan yeah and that is it takes away the power of the, even the fear of the future. Talk about it and it'll take away its power. If you're feeling depressed, isolated, and feeling like you don't want to be alive today or at all, talk about it with someone. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I've always been very careful not to tell my therapist that I want to die because they have they have protocols and, and everything. So it's kind of left that out of the therapy because I couldn't even want to, I didn't want to even talk about it. So ultimately that's why I kind of had to tell mom is because I didn't want to be put somewhere because of my, my feelings that I have all the time every day. I needed to talk about it. Honestly, it's, it's not going to go away. You know, I take medication that is, that is crucial to my survival. Still, it's just not going to go away. And so it's, it has to be lived in. I have to live with it. You know, obviously the people that are close to me, I need them to be strong for me to also live with it, but, but it's difficult to live with and hear about and even think about. And, but it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's a lifestyle. <laughs> um, it's how I live with Well, we're creatures thought. of habits, so yeah. that's what you, you mean. Right. Well, I mean, I, I deal with, oh, I don't want to brush my teeth because it, I want to die rather than do that. I don't want to go to the store or I, I don't even want to do anything little. Um, you don't want to face any problems in life and everything physical well, that you have to do. Everything is hard. Everything's hard and everything's a problem for you. Right. And so so it, you have to face that multiple times every single day. It just comes to a head all the time. So the bottom line is, yes, we learn and we grow through our challenges, but the truth is they really suck so what do you do well if you need to get help if you need help that's number one I've always gotten help since I was 13 I've, I've always had help because I need it but the other thing that I do is I focus on my passion which of course is paint or art being a great artist and you know having that dream of selling art and paying the bills it is what has driven me through the deepest part so I I rely a lot on hope which is kind of weird for me to say that to my younger me is like what that's ridiculous that's like stupid but ultimately I've, I've realized that that's what keeps me here is to hope to be able to pay the bills with making art the hope to find love again the hope to help other people I, I have a passion to exist for other people I want to get through my challenges so that I can give myself the credit that I got through with them the big thing give yourself credit when you do get through things but really pushing 
focusing on the passion. I believe everybody has a passion. I think that that is ultimately how you should steer your life is through the passion of whatever it is. That's what's going to keep you. That's your journey. That's what you are doing. I agree. And if you cannot find your passion because you're too depressed, if you really can't see hope, if you can't find what you need to find, get up in the morning, ask for help. Doctors, friends, family, support groups online. I wish I'd had support groups online when I had my eating disorder. There is help out there. People care about you. We're all hoping that we can do what we want to do, make our lives the way we want them, and follow our passion. And we can do that if we help each other. And that's why Logan and I do this. It's our passion to get through our challenges and then be able to share with you some of the challenges that we went through as examples and then what we learned to get through them. That's our passion. And that leads into our next question, which is what inspires you? What keeps you going day to day?